Hi everybody, it's Victor with Coders, and this week we're actually talking to a group of people who've started a VR startup that's virtual reality. So we're going to be talking to them about what it really means to try to do virtual as they try to grab a piece of this exploding market. Thanks for joining us. Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. Comscope, thinking beyond today's technology to help you make the best decision for your network and your business. Well, so today we're going to be talking about virtual reality. We're going to talk about VR, how you make VR, what tools you use to, VR, to do VR. Of course, this is coders, so we're talking about the software, but also a little bit of the hardware, because this all ties into what carriers are trying to do with video, which is just do more video. And I have a good example here of you can put your mobile phone in here, and this is Google Cardboard, right? And these are what ten bucks or something like that, and you you know strap it on your head, and you've got VR for ten bucks just off your mobile phone. That's and right. it's not just iPhone; it's any pretty large format or semi-large format uh, phone looks really good. And so folks are going to be doing a lot more of this. So I brought three people on here who have been actually creating VR content to talk about it. So you guys introduce yourselves real quick. So, I'm Daniel Buchanan. I'm a co-founder of Unreal Virtual. Uh, my name is Arsini Kulish, co-founder of Unreal Virtual as well. Uh, same title as them. My name is Eric Bennett. Because <laughs> we're all in it together. Right on. Cool. Well, so, and you guys make VR stuff, right? You make VR videos or... We do. So, we are working with the University of Tennessee on providing some solutions to them right now. And we've also shipped a couple of apps for the Cardboard Rift and for, uh, I'm sorry, for the Google Cardboard and for the Oculus Rift. Okay, so. great. Um, and you've got some games that you created too, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about, first of all, when you're creating games, what, what are the tools that you use to create those? So if you're going to create an app and it's going to be cross-platform, which I would recommend mm -hmm. because you don't want to have to write in a bunch of different IDEs, uh, Unity 3D is a great solution for that. Unity 3D allows you to be able to, um, you know, create once and then compile in a lot of different areas. So with Unity 3D, you build an environment, it's game development software. But for VR, it's cool because you don't have to have a conclusion to your game. So it's like you can just go and do whatever you want yeah. to, right? So and you can build it for the Android, iOS. You can get an Xcode project for Mac, PC, Linux all from your same initial file. Now there's some challenges you'll run into on those different platforms with the same uh, software, <laughs> but uh, essentially that's where you start. Cool. And, uh, but, and now for creating video, that's a pretty different pipeline, right? Like you're starting off, you have to have specialized hardware, first of all, right? There's, oh yeah. Yeah. And so to talk a little bit about the hardware that you, that you need, first of all, like the bare minimum. Well, there's some consumer grade products that are coming out on the market, like this little guy we have here, you know, which is just a single image sensor. It's filming at the moment, shooting into a mirror, and that can get panoramic footage. But to get fully spherical footage, you really start needing to have a lot of cameras. So, you know, six is sort of the minimum, like a six GoPro rig or something, but ideally upwards of 14 or, or more cameras is where it's at. But, of course, the more footage you have, you start getting a massive amount of data. Right. And, uh, and then stitching it all together can, can be difficult as well. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not fully automated yet, right? There's still a little bit of manual tweaking. There, there's a lot of happened. work that needs to be done. So not only do you need some expensive camera rigs, but you need a, a pretty expensive uh, computer setup to be able to work with it. You know, upwards of 32 or 64 gigs of RAM, say, for instance, and wow. some powerful video cards. Yeah, okay, so I, it sounds like that's part of the reason why Google was going to do some of this processing in the cloud for the video that they were talking about, which was 3D and VR, right? So that's, I mean, doubling the amount of, never mind the VR content, but now you're talking about 3D VR content, which is, you know, just a huge amount of data they have to put together. Uh, but one of the things that you guys do is actually stitch that video together. So what do you use to do that? Well, there's quite a few pieces of software. Uh, we have a piece of software called AutoPano, or yeah. Daniel does. Color AutoPano. Yeah. Uh, and they also have like a nice viewer uh, app, which is available for, for cell phones or whatever, which makes it easy to sort of uh, share your footage or, 
or work with it on the go. The two big ones are Color Auto Pano and a Video Stitcher. And then there's PTGUI. And PTGUI is an open source project, too, so it's free. The other two have free trials, so you can get them and play with them. And then if you think you like it, you can buy it, and mm -hmm. then you can export it out. Okay, no. so... So we're talking about VR tools and how easy it is to use this stuff. Like I said, QuickTime VR, when I was young, it was a fairly simple process. But with this, it's a little bit more complicated, it right? Yes, is. it is. It's very complicated. So one of the things to keep in mind when you're trying to capture some 360-degree video footage is organization. Organization becomes important because if you've got a cube layout or you've got a cylinder layout, you still need to know which camera is which. So give them a label, like at least write it on there with a Sharpie. And then keep track when you import that video footage off of that SD card, keep track of which camera that was in. That's going to help you lay it out, especially in a cube. You know, if you've got uh, six, six uh, axes of video that you're shooting in, um, you're, you're going to need some organization. It's going to make it easy on you. Also, there's specific settings for the GoPros like people just think you can throw it in there and mm -hmm. like it's gonna work but that's not the case so um, you need to find out what those right settings are and use those for your cameras. Do you have to is that a process of like tuning it and then going back in and seeing what works or is there sort of like a okay set each one to this particular setting? There are some guidelines mm -hmm. is what there are there's basically guidelines but um, the cool part is, the silver lining, I guess, is once you find a configuration that works, once it's kind of tuned for your rig that you've built, you can reuse it more often. And then you just kind of run it through it. Mm -hmm. You know, you run it through it. It makes, uh, uh, it, makes um, you know, it makes it easier going forward. And, uh, you know, what I've seen a lot of has been VR content. And again, this is, you know, making this relevant to wireless spectrum is that VR content is coming. There's going to be a ton of it. Right now what we're seeing is a lot of narrative video, a lot of sort of demo video. I mean, it's the early days of something, so you're going to see stuff that's just kind of test footage, like <clears throat> roller coaster simulators and a lot of that kind of thing. Um, Funny you should mention that. Well, you know, but, <laughs> but there's a thing. Like, do you see more of that or what do you guys see as sort of the next step so one of the challenges VR? with the wireless spectrum since that's a focus uh, is that you have a latency issue mm -hmm. and one of the things that can really take a user out of a good VR experience is a latency issue so um, you know that's going to be a challenge for anybody trying to provide VR content over wireless um, yeah but um, there are solutions out there that can work and that can provide a positive experience so uh, we're actually partnering up with a, an international hardware provider to make a better quality uh, headset that'll work with uh, more phones, all phones, and uh, still provide a, a comfortable but high-grade uh, experience. Oh, cool. So, yeah. And the content of uh, VR as of right now is pretty, well, it's a joke, basically. It's yeah. It's kindergarten level, right? Yeah. But uh, as uh, we see a huge potential in this market, uh, numbers are out there, and uh, by 2020, it should reach up to 150, 170 billion dollar industry. So uh, we actually think that uh, it's not only an entertainment. Uh, we see VR applications as a tool of uh, your daily activities. Uh, we can build VR services for uh, landscaping businesses, for construction companies. Well, of course, everybody understands the situation with the real estate market and car dealerships and so forth. And this is what already been done on different level. But we're talking about different technologies because uh, when you're talking about uh, making VR content, it's uh, we can use GoPros, but depending on what you need to, to what's, what's the end result. Because sometimes you need 3D mapping. For that, you need the depth perception. And that's a different setup completely mm -hmm. from GoPros. And uh, we actually right now working on building our own rigs that are going to suit different needs for different VR applications. And that's not something that's too common, right? A lot of people that are doing VR right now are just kind of using off-the-shelf things, right? Well, it's the beginning. It's, as both. I said, it's a con both. kindergarten, both. yes. Yeah. But uh, we, have big, we have the big players coming in. But we know that HoloLens, for example, had a little... Mm -hmm. Right, bad review. Yeah, just just recently, which could be a crushing situation for the whole thing. Terrible and, field of view. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Oculus Rift is about to be shipped in January. There, as Daniel said, there are a couple 
uh, players that uh, we cooperating with right now that going to be pretty big on this market. We're confident in that. But um, but I think the answer is uh, in the company that does hardware and software approach. I think Apple's approach with the iPhone basically was a very good example of uh, well, not the iPhone only, but the computers, of course, in the beginning because they were doing computer. Uh, hardware and the software that was tuned, fine-tuned for that hardware could use any, you know, all the capacity. So, um, therefore, I think in the VR, with the problems of latency and all that, the unified solution would be the ultimate uh, game changer. And we want to make it mass, uh, public, you know, uh, uh, Accessibility. accessibility. Yeah, so. accessibility is a big thing for us yeah. because we think if VR is going to take off as a medium, like more people are going to have to be able to use it. It mm -hmm. can't be just like limited to people who have really nice computers and an Oculus Rift. Right. We're talking about that, that'll be a fifteen hundred dollar rig. Everybody's got a smartphone, you know. So if yeah, you, there's certain there's certain ways you can use even your smartphone, and and the future of the cameras is going to be built in the smartphones. Gonna it's it's gonna expand that market. So we're talking about ability of any person with no uh, education, no training, to be able to capture the footage, upload it in the cloud, get it st stitched, whatever needs to be done, if 3D mapping needs to be done, this texturing, everything, and then you get the end result back on your phone, and you put it in the cardboard or whatever device you have and enjoy it. And then computationally, you're talking about still, though, they, they would have to take that footage and then Transfer upload it to the cloud, yes. and then it's processed there. Yes. So... so uh, yeah, still a lot of information going back and forth. Through well, we 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 are working on these solutions too. There, yeah. there, there are ways around that. Yeah. <laughs> so I think streaming is going to be important because yes. if you end up with a huge video file, you can't just give that to the user when they download the app. You're right. going to end up with like a 200 gig app. You can't have that. Right. So right. Streaming is going to be huge. The issue is like buffering, caching. So how do you buffer or cache latency? and a movement that you're not sure what the user's going to do yet. <laughs> How do you do that? You know? So, that's yeah. a challenge. Yeah, well, and you've got the usual compression issues that you got to think about, and, you know. Well, we're looking for Pipe Piper, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly the, what came to mind. The footage uncompressed is just unimaginably large. You know, yeah. 4, sure. 4K is nothing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah right on. We're facing some major issues. For example, we considered using local uh, satellite dish that was built at Tech 2020, and as we found out, it's can it be used? It's just incapable. It doesn't have enough bandwidth. It's right. a nine wow. second latency. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. It's on, enough on to kill it. Can you imagine that? Good so grief. all this, this kind of equipment is not good enough for yeah. VR. <laughs> well, and, and that's a really great point for the wireless folks is, to, you know, talking about that latency and talking about how it's a, it's a throughput issue. And what we have to have are networks that are fast enough but also have the capacity in order to, you know, it's like Absolutely. one thing being fast, but then if only 100 people out of 1,000 can be fast on that network, then you've got a problem again. Absolutely. So they've got to have the capacity and the speed to be able to do these things, and for consumers to be able to enjoy the content. Well, the idea of streaming, you know, HD video was, was pretty outrageous not that long ago. So, I mean, everything's just moving forward at such a rate, and the demand is going to be so high. You know, like, people are just now figuring out what they can do with VR. Like, oh, we right. can do tours, or, oh, we can do hands-on training tutorials, and there's companies making, you know, haptic feedback systems where you'll be able yep. to feel things, and, you know, gloves where you'll be able to really interact with your environment. Uh, catwalk, you know, just making a, uh, a actually affordable and small enough to set in your room, like, three-dimensional treadmill where you'll yeah, be able Omni, to walk Omni. around. Yeah. yeah, omnidirectional treadmill. So, I mean... The demand will be there, and and the technology will, you know, we'll leave it, it up. We'll yeah, it's it's gonna happen. I mean, Hundred seventy billion dollars. Sure, that's that's good buy for everybody. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of people think it's gonna be like the dot com boom. You know, it's just it could not just virtual reality, but you know, the next step of augmented reality is mm -hmm. gonna be just massive. Yes, absolutely. We think that the virtual reality gonna spike, but it's gonna be brought up again by augmented reality and we have that's exactly what we're talking about on landscaping solutions something like that that's not vr solution that's already ar solution mm -hmm. and actually unreal virtual is not vr company it's vr ar company because we're already looking forward to these solutions because it's going to be out there 
and HoloLens if they're gonna fail with a field of view. Here we go. We got we got an empty spot to fill. <laughs> sure, right. <laughs> yeah, the market hates a vacuum, right? Right. All right. Well, so uh, again, the name of the company, Unreal Virtual. Unreal Virtual. Unreal Virtual. And I want to thank you guys for coming in, talking about right. VR. And thank you folks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Coders. Thank you for having us. Coders is a production of RCR TV News. To reach Victor Agreta Jr. or to suggest a show topic for Coders, you can reach him on Twitter at SuperPixels. For all the latest news on wireless code and the whole world of wireless, check out rcrwireless.com. <laughs>